Thanks for your company. Now, the minority NDC in Parliament says the Nana Akufuado's administration has performed abysmally in the area of security at an ongoing press briefing. MP for K2 North, James Kruta Veji, called on the president to bring closure to the victims of what uh, they describe as the kangaroo disaster since vigilante group invisible forces are complicit in the matter when they took over um, the management of facilities. Let's go over to Parliament now for a continuation of the briefing. That low quality there would uh, take you back to Parliament when we are able to establish a clean feed. You're watching Joy News today with me, Benis Abu Bed. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stories. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying here on Joy News today. Just gone by uh, on this channel, we showed you uh, the minority in Parliament uh, briefing the press on uh, President Okufuado's first 100 days in office. For them, his performance in the security sector has been abysmal, and uh, uh, that, that uh, press conference is still ongoing. Meanwhile, President Okufuado is holding a closed door meeting with former presidents Jerry John Rawlins, John Kufu and John Mahama. Joy News is learning the meeting at the request of the president is to afford him the opportunity to tap into their wealth of experience in governance. Raymond Aqua spoke earlier to Deputy Information Minister Kojo Pong Kruma about this meeting. Yes, I'm informed that there will be such a meeting. Uh, the president, I think, upon his winning of the election, mentioned that he was privileged to have a number of former presidents at his disposal. And then on a regular basis, he will be consulting or engaging with them to share ideas on how to move this country forward. It is in furtherance of uh, that uh, commitment that I do understand that this meeting is taking place today. What is the agenda for this meeting? They will be having general conversations about the economy, about some of the things that are being done to put the economy back on track, about our international relations, about governance, anti-corruption, security, and uh, a number of other issues that may pop up from uh, the former heads of state as well. So the president is consulting them on these important issues? He is sharing ideas with them, he's explaining to them what he's doing, and I'm sure they will also give him some feedback. The ex-president John Dramani Mahama is particularly worried about the um, arrangements surrounding, first and foremost, his residence, which was previously the vice president's residence, and also the issue to do with um, the cars that former officials is, uh, are said to have actually taken out of the office of the president and in very capacities. Is that issue top on the agenda too? There are also other issues that other former presidents and the sitting president would like to discuss. They will all be on the table because I understand that this is an open engagement uh, to share ideas. Is this going to be a regular thing? Uh, as the uh, president initially said, as regularly as his schedule would allow and as their schedules would allow, they would do well um, to converge. I can't give a timetable uh, on it, but as regularly as their mutual schedules would allow, we would expect that these engagements would take place. Um, the president has no difficulties with um, engaging somebody, and this is President John Dramani Mahama, who may contest him in 2020. Why should he? Why should he? And discussing state policy in the direction of his government. We are one nation, one people with one destiny. Even his policies, he comes to parliament to articulate them. What's the big deal with having a discussion with former heads of state about some of these policies? President Akufuado has... Uh, but this particular former heads of state was deemed to be incompetent and incapa not so capable of managing the economy. Why would his advice matter at this point in time? He is a former president of the Republic of Ghana. If the president is meeting former presidents, it's not about former president Mahama specifically or former president uh, Rawlings or former president Kufo. It's about engaging with former presidents who have some experience, who have some knowledge, to share with them ideas on how this country is moving forward. Away from that, please, in the northern region, a member of parliament disagree on the nationality of Tripani Atakis, in which 600 houses were set ablaze. And, uh, well, he spoke to me earlier uh, on news desk. That is PRO of uh, the Ghana Police Service in the northern region. ASP Mohamed Tanko. The MP for the area uh, is totally wrong in disputing it because 
uh, our investigation established that uh, about three weeks ago, some uh, team members who are to believe uh, came to the area and threatened that, or initially reported that their livestock had been stolen, and they were threatened that it was the Chukusis in Ghana who had uh, stolen them. And if uh, they didn't find them, they would teach them a lesson. So a few uh, weeks afterwards, uh, this attack happened. Our intelligence indicated that it is the people uh, based from Tubu who uh, initially attacked the Chokoshes. So mm -hmm. after the attack, then the Chokoshes also uh, organized themselves and uh, attacked the uh, people based who are Ghanaian. So that is uh, what uh, our investigation so far has established. But investigations are still ongoing. Uh, it, it is likely maybe uh, uh, after further investigations, mm. some one or two things might change. But the difficulty that we have as of now is we've not been able to uh, get the people best, that is the Ghanaian people, people best stop because most of them, or all of them have fled the area and it's become very difficult get them and we are trying very much to get them and when we, when we know after getting them uh, we'll be able to get uh, something further as far as the investigation is concerned okay asp tamko have you uh, been able to make any arrests so far no so far we've not been able to make uh, any arrests expert lavinia Dimensa is urging the akufado government to put in lots of structures to sustain the peace of the country. The comment comes a day after Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmia addressed a gathering at the Joy News 100 Days Town Hall meeting at the Law Court Complex in Accra. Among a tall list of what the government has done to improve the economy, Dr. Balmia also stated that in terms of security, his government would ensure that anyone who flouted the law is dealt with. But in her appraisal of the first 100 days of the government in office, the deputy executive director of one upset she did not believe that the presentation of the vice president touched adequately uh, on security granted it's important to recognize that yes something has been done some things have been done but i think from where i was coming from and leading to you know the question that i had raised mm. was that was, my expectation was that 103 achievements and none of it touched on security. Mm -hmm. I think the closest we came to was when he talked about um, the fund that has been created for human trafficking and then also talked about peacekeeping and uh, mm -hmm. what has been done in terms of peacekeeping. But in terms of internal security, there was absolutely nothing that I picked from his achievements and that's where um, I thought uh, it was a bit of a concern for me. Okay, so we, we saw you ask that question in there and the clip we just showed. Was your question answered satisfactorily? Factorally, were you satisfied with the answer you got? I think he provided aspects of you know what needs to be done in terms of looking at how to address the issue of violence. But I think he was leaning more towards conflict, and the question was more about dealing with a culture of violence, which goes beyond conflicts. Because when you talk about conflicts, then the focus tends to be on you know uh, think actual conflict situations rather than you know violent situations that. It, very, leads us very quickly to issues of great chaos. And so he touched on aspects of it. He mentioned early warning, which is in, important. But again, what is early warning? I think the focus was on intelligence. From where I stand, and in terms of the analysis that we do, one of the things that we realize is that the ch intelligence seems to be challenging. Otherwise, why did Abubloshi happen the way it happened? So I think it's not about just intelligence, but it's about having a broader framework. What is the national architecture for peace? You know, we are talking about infrastructures for peace. We have the National Peace Council, as I mentioned yesterday, but then the National Peace Council is just one level of it. How do you cascade, you know, security issues beyond the security agencies? Mm -hmm. They're not the only stakeholders at stake. You need to engage at the various tracks, you know, multiple tracks, state level. That's where he seemed to focus on. Beyond state level, how do we deal with civil society? How do we deal with community level? You know, so I think those were the things that we're looking for. And I think there's a lot of goodwill, there's a lot of, um, you know, realization that a lot of the violence that, we are that is happening now, being done in the name of 
political parties, mm -hmm. everybody realizes that, look, it's more about criminal violence rather than any political, real political affiliations. Of course, politics become an opportunity for people to hang on, to, to legitimize what they're trying to do. Um, so the question is that, given that everybody realizes this, how do we take advantage of this period mm -hmm. to begin to really develop a national architecture infrastructure for peace mm -hmm. that looks at all the various levels beyond just what the state does. Deputy Executive Director of OneEp Ghana, Levina Diamonds, was speaking to me earlier on Johnny's desk. Now, Deputy Information Minister Kojo Ponkrumah was on the Super Morning Show this morning to provide answers to matters arising from Joy News' 100 Days of Change Town Hall meeting with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. There are the revenue bills. The revenue bills are the bills that contain the taxes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the Energy Sector Levies Act contains about, um, I think, about five different levies. Right. When you read the budget, the budget is in two parts. Uh, and if you look at the front page of the budget, it says that this is the economic policy mm. and budget. So the policy is first approved. I had a lot of your colleagues reporting that the budget had been approved. No, the budget had not been approved at mm. the time. It was a policy statement that was approved. Right. Then you come with the specific bills, which are the revenue bills or the appropriation bills. The revenue bills are the ones that affect the revenue items. The appropriation right. bills are the ones that affect the expenditure items. Right. Now, when the specific revenue bills, like the Special Import Levy um, Amendment Act, like the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Petroleum um, uh, tax amendments were passed, you saw a marginal decline in fuel prices because fuel prices uh, contain three elements. Mm -hmm. One, what you would uh, typically call the FOB price or um, the actual cost of crude. Right. Two, the exchange rate prevailing at the time. And three, the taxation regime that has been imposed on it. Now, government may not have power over the cost of crude on the global market, even if we are using what we've lifted from Jubilee there's an agreed global sales price. You don't have control over it. What government has control over is the exchange rate and the taxes. So what have we done? You would notice that the taxes have been amended and we have cut back on as much taxation as can be cut back affecting these areas. Number two, the exchange rate, which was uh, contributing to the escalating price as it was increasing is also being aggressively managed downwards. Mm. And it is a combination of these two that you will um, see. Of course, as you do this, if you see uh, uh, prices translate in another direction on the world market, it will begin to kick in. But the big picture is that in these 100 days, the tax cuts that were promised to move the focus of our economic policy from taxation to production have been done by government. What we need to do now is to work with the intervening agencies, and that's the second step, to okay. work with the so intervening agencies so that the full benefits are felt yeah. by the people of Ghana. Okay, Today, um, we have done a lot of work on spare parts. We, we have gone through the classification. We are engaging um, with ECOWAS. When we are done and the um, policy implication is done by government. There will still be spare parts dealers at Abosokain or uh, in Kumasi or elsewhere who will now have the onus of translating what we are doing to benefit the people of Ghana. That's mm -hmm. another hurdle that we have to jump. Mm -hmm. And that is a hurdle which when it comes to we all have to work on uh, to you know, make the necessary arguments. If you take transport fares, for example, we have done our cuts. Yet you saw transport fares go up by a certain margin. It is important to, con and they have explained that, listen, they had outstanding increments, which they never did for many months. And therefore, they would have even gone higher than 15%. So they have factored. But we still believe that we need to engage with them so that what government has done, these intervening agencies can help translate them to the people of Ghana. But if you ask the question, what have you been doing in 100 days? Mm. We can list all of these things uh, that we have done. Now, we haven't said that by virtue of the fact that, you know, you do these things automatically on the same day, the effect will be felt mm. by everybody. Yeah, that point is made. That I, is I, why. That is we go back to the press conference by the minority in Parliament being addressed by the MP for K2 South. For four years of 110 elephant-sized ministers, Mr. President, listen to the plea of most well-meaning Ghanaians and drastically prone down your government now. And so, with only the next election as an option, we ask 
the Almighty God for divine intervention in the affairs of this nation. Already, but just still know. May the Almighty take over the steering wheel. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, so you see the battle is a lot. The Honorable Atu Forson will add some dimension of a few comments that will largely border on issues of economic uh, management, after which we will permit you to interrogate the content of the statement with questions that we may have. So, Honorable Atu Forson, you may now deal uh, with it. And then after that, we will allow you to ask your questions. On our first one. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, let me also use this opportunity to thank the media for taking the time to be present here today. But I would like to begin with and talk about a story that we all know that we, we are witnessing a great debt deception under the MPP. It has become apparent and that the current government used the deception and inflated promises to get to office. The most patent, which is also compromising the professional integrity of the Vice President, Dr. Bawumia, in particular, is the MPP's position on our country's public debt. We will, succinct, we will be succinct on this matter because it is, an, it is as shameful as it is obvious. We will not borrow, that is what Apologize for the break in feed there. And uh, well, that was a former Deputy Minister of Finance, Atto uh, Kaisal, um, reacting to 100 days of President Okufuado's government. And on the streets of Accra, we've been asking Ghanaians to describe the government's 100 days in office and explain their choice of word. Promising with the events and what is going on now, at least. Within 100 days, it, we don't expect that everything will be perfect. Perfection will be attained after some period. Excellent, you know, everything is okay. And I think uh, if we give him the chance, he's going to do more. Let's support him, you know, and he's going to do more. I'll say it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, since, since he came, he have done a lot, more than the previous president. Because um, let's take the taxes, for instance, a lot of tasks, uh, a lot of them are just gone down, and also um, the galamse, yeah, the galamse, the galamse issue is getting that. I would say it's promising, yeah, yeah because um, 100 days, I think, though it's not all that much, and now that you know, we should give him some few time to see, you know, he can do it, he can deliver. Disappointing, because what Ghana has voted for. Lots of the MPP guys that voted and lots of like the NDC guys that they were crying that John Mama is doing is not doing well, I think they regret it. Cause he promised them a lot and nothing has been done. Yeah. Let's stay a while on 100 days of President Okufuado's government. Take you back to Parliament, uh, where former Deputy Finance Minister um, Atu Forsen is uh, actually addressing the media. And he calls it a deception by this government on the debt uh, stock. It's described as Temperton Enterprise Group bond. The bond was virtually participated by only two investors. The whole bond transaction was shrouded in secrecy to the extent that Ghanaian investors were denied opportunity to participate in the deal. Oh. In essence, the entire deal lacks transparency. One single investor by name Franklin Temperton, which is a known resident investor, 
investor, everybody knows him, investor that patronized both domestic and sovereign bonds in the past, purchased almost 95% of the latest government domestic bond. The size of this is virtual private plus a placement makes it akin to sovereign bond or foreign loan. Some have argued that this bond purchase should be compared with our sovereign bond rates. We would be reminded that our domestic bonds have a hybrid, the city and the forest feature. And therefore, when non-resident investors think in foreign currency at the time of purchase, they hold the equivalent city bond in the same explicit, implicit foreign exchange, foreign currency. Therefore, when the event sell, they sell. You're watching Dawn News today with me, Bernice Abubakar.